<clears throat> okay. So now that we've uh, gone through all of the notation, all of the, the concepts of magnitude and direction, and hopefully you have an understanding of direction angle being measured as, it's, as if it's in standard position, talking about that magnitude represent, uh, is represented by the length of the vector. Let's now take the, these concepts and actually apply them to the physical world, right? Vectors play a big part in physics. There's also a branch of mathematics called vector calculus. Uh, that talks about motion, and there is a lot of motion problems when you're taking calculus. So, uh, what we're going to talk about here is just very elementary stuff based on that. Um, so, let's get to it. In terms of force, we're going to look at vector applications in, in two areas. We're going to talk about force on an object and velocity. Okay, so this, is, this video is just strictly to talk about how the concepts that we've already talked about can be seen and applied and uh, shown with a picture in problems like this. Let's focus on force first of all. Force is when, is when a, a, an object is, be, is being enacted upon by something outside of it, right? So if you have a force, you could be talking about you're pulling on a rope with a certain amount of force, or you're pushing an object with a certain amount of force, or gravity is a, is a force that enacts upon an object. All of these are relevant forces that can be enacted upon an object, and you'll see what we mean as we go through. Now, one of the, the last ways that we expressed vectors was in this, uh, sometimes it's called trig form. In this case, uh, we're just calling it the component form, but we're using magnitude and we're using the direction angle to do that. Specifically, when we're talking about force, you'll see the way that this is written. Okay, uh, Forces are expressed for us in pre-calculus in terms of pounds, a certain pound of force. So you can pull on a rope with a certain amount of force that's measured in pounds, okay? So that's why this is inside the magnitude symbol. When you are told what the pounds are, the pounds of force, 80 pounds of force are enacted upon a blah, blah, blah. When you hear that number, that number is the magnitude and it goes in place of this, okay? Um, and just as an example, because magnitude also means length, before we get going here, I just want to emphasize this. Suppose there's an object, and, and typically with these objects, we just use a point. Okay, we're not going to draw the actual object. I'm certainly not, because I'm a terrible artist. Okay, but because magnitude represents the length of the vector, and because the, now we're using pounds to represent the magnitude by the transitive property, the longer the vector, the greater the force. So, for example, if there's a force enacting upon an object like this, and there's a second force enacting upon the object that's going like this, say in this direction, okay? This, because that vector was drawn longer, because its magnitude, because its length is greater, that force is stronger than this force. So quite literally, when you're doing the drawings that make up these force problems, which we're going to do a few of, okay? The longer the vector, the stronger the force. And that's going to affect the, the overall movement of the object. Okay? You're going to hear the word resultant force a lot. Resultant force is the sum of all forces upon an object. Okay? So we talked about resultant vectors when we were doing this before, just as a review. Let's go back. Okay? You should have notes on this stuff already. We talked about resultant vectors and how if you have an object going, or if, uh, you know, relate this to what we're talking about now in terms of force. If you have an object being pulled in this direction, and you have that same object being pulled in that direction, okay, if you add these two forces like we did at the time, then the object is going to move in this direction. Now, think about this for a second. Take a look. Okay? It might be hard to tell from your vantage point, I don't know, but this vector is longer than this vector, okay? which means this force is greater than this force. Now, if you expressed both of these as force vectors uh, pulling in these two directions, for example, because they're both sort of pulling to the right, and because this force is greater pulling up than this one is pulling down, that's why the resultant force, the resultant vector, is drastically pulling to the right, because they're both pulling to the right, but it's slightly 
above horizontal because this force is greater than that force. So the picture really starts to represent the dynamics of the movement of this object based on these forces. Okay. The same thing applies, let's find it, the same thing applies when we start talking about velocity. Now, if you've taken any science courses uh, and you've discussed the concept of velocity, velocity and speed, while similar in what they mean, are a little bit different because speed is directionless. Something that's traveling up at 10 miles an hour is traveling at 10 miles an hour. Something that's traveling down at 10 miles an hour is still traveling 10 miles an hour if you just consider speed. When you want to talk about velocity, traveling up, because it, now we're taking into consideration its direction, velocity is speed with direction. 10 miles per hour up would be positive 10 miles per hour. 10 miles per hour falling back to Earth would be negative 10 miles per hour. Okay, so again, velocity is speed with direction. And when it comes to using velocity to, uh, vectors to explain velocity, the speed is the magnitude. So again, if magnitude represent, is represented by length and speed is a magnitude, when we start talking about objects that are moving, if something is traveling, let's say, in this direction with this speed, right, magnitude is speed, and something is traveling, let's say a plane, just say for example, let's say the wind is traveling in this direction, but the plane, a plane in motion is traveling in this direction, right? Planes travel really fast, right? So because planes travel really fast, typically faster than the wind, then we would draw a longer vector for that plane, right? Uh, because the magnitude's greater and the speed is greater. So if you take nothing away from this, just remember that the longer we draw the vector, the faster an object is when we're talking about velocity. When we're talking about force, the longer the vector, the greater the force pulling in that direction or pushing in that direction. Okay, and then lastly, the resultant velocity, similar to resultant force, is what we get when we add all of the vectors together that are happening at once. So say you have a boat traveling in this direction, but there's a current traveling in that direction. That's going to push the boat in that direction a little bit more. Okay, a plane in, in, the, in the air is being enacted upon by the wind. Right, all of these forces at play. We're going to look at this pr at a pretty introductory level, okay? But just keep that in mind as we're going through this. The concepts of pounds and speed being magnitude measurements and the length of these vectors representing that poundage or that speed.